friends and subscribers and welcome if this is the first time you're joining me. My name is Odessa, I'm the Mystic Intuitive Healer and I deliver messages through the cards that help you to awaken, heal, align and grow. So in today's reading, I am filling you in on what makes you charmed. I'm specifically going to be looking at how you're charmed in beauty, charisma, luck and magic. So some of these qualities you may be aware of, Others of them haven't really developed yet for you, but they're on their way. But some of these qualities may be things that you're actually overlooking, and I want you to know exactly how blessed you truly are. I also want to mention that this is a very special partnership with an incredible jewelry line, Anna Luisa, out of New York. I was completely blown away by this particular brand. Um, many of you guys know if you've watched my readings for a while that I used to work in fashion, but what I didn't let you guys know is I actually designed jewelry and I can tell you without a doubt that the quality of these pieces is exceptional for the price point. They are 14 karat gold plated. Many of them have semi-precious stones used and lots of them have beautiful spiritual motifs used symbolism that I actually talk about in my readings all the time. So you're going to be able to see the three pieces that I added to my own jewelry collection when you go to your pile selection because I've partnered each of them with each of the piles. And you can also see them in my extra bonus video this week where I walk you through how to charm a piece of jewelry step by step. So you can actually magically influence and program a piece of jewelry to help you on a daily basis with either protection or adding in extra power to your daily manifestations to bring basically anything into your life. So definitely go and check out that. And I also highly recommend you go and check out the Ana Luisa website because they have so many amazing pieces, lots of great basics as well, like stackable rings and adorable little earrings. And as an extra special bonus for you, you can get 20% off any any order by using Odessa 20 at checkout. So I have three piles for you guys to select from today. Pile number one has the citrine point as well as the dried yarrow. And it's also partnered with my first ring, which has mother of pearl inlay. Mother of pearl is a very soothing, tranquil stone. It can help open up your crown chakra. And this also features this gorgeous little star and the star symbolism is connected back to source. It can be talking about your divine purpose. It can also be talking about ancestors. And one of the things that I love about a piece of jewelry that has some sort of spiritual symbolism on it like this is every time I look at it, it reminds me of my intention. So if it is charmed like this one is, it's adding to that magic. Pile number two is partnered with the dried Queen Anne's Lace as well as the Palo Santo bundle. And the jewelry piece that's connected with this pile is my beautiful Sun Charm necklace. So this particular piece is part of a collection that's all based on the elements. So they have fire, air, earth, and water, as well as spirit. And I selected the fire symbol with the sun, which is a symbol of growth, as well as illumination. It can be talking about the divine masculine. It can also connect back to our beautiful Leos out there. And it can also connect back to um, lucky energy, even star power. Then pile number three is partnered with the amethyst point, as well as the beautiful purple dried flowers. And the second ring that I added to my collection, which has this beautiful diamond shape lapis lazuli inlay, as well as the sun rays coming out. So the diamond shape is connected back to the number four, which is talking about the four elements, everything coming together. And lapis lazuli opens up our third eye. So this particular ring is talking about 
all of the elements of who we are coming together, opening us up so that we can step into our own true power, our creativity, and really shine. So I'm going to give you guys a close-up of the cards and the items and the jewelry pieces in just a moment, and I will see you at your pile. Welcome back. So we are going to be talking about what makes you charmed. You selected the citrine point as well as the dried yarrow. And you also picked the beautiful Anna Luisa mother of pearl star motif ring. But before we get into your cards, I want to mention I'm running a contest right now. You can win a free reading with me. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, comment on this reading. And then when I reach the mile, stone of 6,000 subscribers, I will be announcing the winner and we are very close to reaching that milestone. So please participate. So let's get into these cards. I am going to start off by talking about how you're charmed in beauty. So that's what these first two cards is talking about. And you receive the goddess Ray flow and it's card number 44. So that reduces down to the number eight and the Ace of Pentacles. So what I get from these cards is you are very graceful. There is something very beautiful about the way you move. You may be a dancer. This might be just um, the way you naturally carry yourself, the way you walk, the way you move your hands, the way you smile, the way that you look at people. But there is definitely something about fluidity, that there's a romance about the way you move. Um, I get the sense that you likely look a lot younger than you actually are. And I feel like you are going to consistently look younger throughout the remainder of your life. You may have never really worried about getting older. And because you're not stressed about it, you are retaining that youthful energy. I also get this sense that you might have a strong inner child and you might have this childlike magical energy about you that also adds to this youthful energy. I get the sense that you also likely take care of yourself, but I get this quality of being kind to the earth as well as your body. So you may want to use natural products, like you may already be using natural products that don't have any harsh chemicals that um, help you to retain a natural beauty. I do get this sense that for many of you, you um, really try and enhance just your natural beauty and you may wear makeup, you may, you know, have a beauty routine, but I don't think that you are trying to change who you are. I think that you are naturally um, really responsive to the qualities that you inherently have. Like you try and amplify what you already have, you know, work with what God gave you, right? And I think that you're an inspiration to other people as a result of that. I get this sense that you're being asked to do that even more because I think that you may have come from a place in the past where you didn't fit the beauty standard. And it might be something that you slowly worked into over time. And this might be something that you step even further into. And I think that honestly, there's going to be doors that open to you if you embrace your natural beauty. You know, like you might be looking at magazines and you're looking at commercials and movies and people that look like you are not being represented, but you need to be part of the change, right? So start an account, like put yourself out there on social media, start doing, you know, 
your routines online, sharing that with people. And just because you don't think that what you have to offer is unique and different doesn't mean that other people won't. Because the sense that I get from this is that you are at the precipice of great change and that you have the ability to have a fresh new start to like plant new roots for yourself in the physical world that are connected back to your ease with beauty, your just natural flow. Maybe you're making your own beauty products out of things from your garden. Maybe you just have your own unique way of, um, you know, skincare, or maybe it has something to do with the way that you dress or the way you do your hair. Like there's something about external beauty that you do that is possibly even from your heritage. Like maybe there are some things that beauty secrets, little things that were passed down to you through the people in your family. And you're being asked to like share that with people that you could have possibly a side hustle or this could for some of you actually expand to the point where you are a brand ambassador or you are literally modeling or there is a new business that gets launched because of this. Your beauty and the way you approach your physical beauty is going to open up doorways for you with the number eight. Like four is a, is a number talking about foundations. And then when we have the 44 combining for the number eight, that's talking about you literally finishing major life cycles, painful periods possibly, and it bringing a fresh new start. So that might not resonate for all of you, but th this energy of you being an influencer in some capacity for a brand new approach to um, beauty is something that you have within your grasp that could literally change your life. That is so powerful. Like, it's like you have a lucky charm and you don't even realize that you have it. It's like there is money that could just be deposited into your account with just you believing in yourself. Like, that's really all you need to do. You need to believe in yourself. There's already ideas coming through to you about things that you could do with your beauty. Take action on them. It doesn't matter how many people are in the beauty space. It doesn't matter. There's enough for everyone. Right? There truly is. We've been brainwashed into thinking that there isn't, but there is enough for you. There is a special little niche market that is just waiting for you to step into. And I also get this sense that you're going to be able to network with other people. Beautiful birds is what I'm being told. Other beautiful birds. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Okay. So next, we are going to look at, that is these two cards. We are going to look at how you're um, charmed in charisma. So you received the athlete dedication to transcending physical limits, including um, disabilities, development of personal willpower, and strength of spirit. And you also got smoky quartz, clearing, grounding, transformation. Smoky quartz grounds us to Earth's energies, working with our root chakra. It absorbs negative energy and expands our consciousness. It helps disperse anxiety and draws in calm energy. Followed by appetite, uh, communication, teaching, awareness. Appetite helps eliminate blockages, brings the body into balance. It helps to balance emotions, um, chakras, and facilitates self-expression and communication. It manifests ideas into reality with ease. Okay, so you had this larger-than-life energy. You are a natural spokesperson. You have a lot of charisma. And I think that it's because you express yourself not just through your words, but it's everything. You're very physical. 
So maybe you talk with your hands. Maybe there's just like a sparkle in your eye and people can tell that you're very genuine. Like what you are communicating to them, there's truth behind it. There's wisdom behind it. You're very self-aware. I think that you have dealt with your own pain, right? Going back to this beauty energy, like this might be a situation where, you know, you always hated something about yourself because it didn't fit what was being sold to you. But of course, it was being sold to you that way so that you would feel like garbage, right? They make more money from you if you don't feel like you're beautiful, you know, and you are going to fill up like a whole medicine cabinet full of different like treatments that are going to shift and change things. Um, and I think that you really worked through that. Maybe some of you were even in the beauty space before, like in a traditional sense, maybe you're a makeup artist, maybe you've worked um, in cosmetic surgery, or you've had a procedure done, or there are certain elements, like maybe even being a personal trainer, and there's certain things about your field that drew you to it, you know, trying to help people feel amazing about themselves, but there's there was a dark side to it, and you had to work through your own shadow energy, work through that self-doubt, and you broke free, and I think that you now see the marketing, or if you haven't yet had this epiphany, you will in the future, and there will be just like a watershed moment is what's coming forward. Like there's gonna be something that helps you to get clarity, to be able to transform how you see self, and that's how it all starts, right? We all always have to start with self. I wouldn't be able to teach you guys anything. I wouldn't be able to share any of this with you if I hadn't come to these realizations within my own life, right? Like I had to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, what am I doing? You know, like who am I? How do I measure my worth in this world? And I had to confront all kinds of different self-limiting beliefs because I had convinced myself that beauty came from outside of myself instead of from inside myself. Now, I am a huge proponent of beauty. I am in love with self-adornment. I love jewelry. I love clothing. I love makeup. I love it all. But even if I had none of this, I know that I would still be beautiful. Beauty is inside me. It's not something I do to myself or that is coming from outside me, or a label or a judgment that someone else bestows on me. And I think that you are gonna get to that point as well if you're not already there. And it looks like it's just your strength of spirit, your willpower that's gonna just, you know, bust open these doors of opportunity where you are gonna have this new business or this opportunity I keep getting from the beauty space. And I think that you are going to still love all the things that you loved before. And it's the fact that you're able to really be authentic and you're able to indulge in the in those aspects of life, right? The makeup, the hair, the beauty, what, however you choose to present yourself. But it not define you is what is going to be the huge game changer for you. It, it just feels like there's people that are gonna wanna like lift you up and say, this is someone we believe in. This is someone I wanna see more of. And it's based on the fact that you really are able to communicate and articulate your ideas and people know that you are genuine. They can feel it in your energy that you are telling them the truth. You're not trying to um, blindside them. You're not trying to deceive them. This isn't some sort of gimmick. Everything you say, you actually practice what you preach. You believe in what you say. This is beautiful. Okay, so now let's find out um, how you are charmed in luck. So basically, how are you a lucky charm? So you got the convention card with Sagittarius as well as Venus, card number 10. And fertility with water, Leo, there's that star power energy. 
watermelon and the number 29, which reduces down to the number 11, which is talking about your life purpose. This is so wild. And there's an angel on this card. Yeah, you're going to be like an angel to some people in their life. I think that you have this really unique, interesting ability that some people are just blessed with this energy where you are just naturally lucky. The sun shines on you. This might be a situation where you have just this overwhelming sense that no matter what, you're always going to be protected. You're always going to be okay. It doesn't mean that you haven't experienced loss or hardship. You have but I do think that your your needs, like your basic needs are always met. Even if you're sort of like down to your like last, you know, dollar, all of a sudden there'll be some sort of miracle that comes through for you where, you know, a, you get a new job or someone gives you some money or lends you money or like those things just sort of line up for you. They just sort of happen. And I think that you are also a luck charm for other people. So you may have noticed this, but not necessarily had confidence that, you know, it was real. Like you might have thought you were sort of reading into things. And the energy I get is that when you are around other people, you are sort of the fertilizer. You're the sun. It's helping germinate their seeds. So you motivate them because you are so passionate about what you're doing. You're so in love with the opportunities and you're in a flow state, right? With Ray, you are in a flow state moving forward. Let's um, see where the universe takes us. And because of that, other people are benefiting from that energy as well. And like new miracles start blossoming in their lives. But I also think that when things sort of fall apart with a person, you are not on good terms with them any longer, or they've hurt you and you've separated, all of a sudden it's like they go into a drought phase. All of that beautiful energy all of a sudden evaporates and they are stuck. And I think that you may have even had people that sort of like took advantage of you. They didn't see you as the beautiful god slash goddess that you are you didn't they didn't see you as the angel that was coming into their life to like sort of bless them and maybe you didn't know <laughs> you know you didn't know that that's the kind of like energy that you have and that you're here to nurture and fertilize ideas in other people that is part of your life purpose to help to nurture those ideas in other people you're mainly focusing on what you need to do, but your confidence and your support of other people in a really um, authentic way helps them to see the best in themselves. And it's just like flowing and growing and everything is beautiful. And they didn't see that. And so that when things started happening for them, you know, maybe they are on social media and things start taking off for them and everything is going so well, they think, oh, well, I don't need them anymore. And they take advantage of you or they cast you aside and like they just, they don't show any appreciation for like the support. And the separation happens and within a short amount of time, all of a sudden their views completely drop or, you know, the relationship that they left you for completely falls apart or the job doesn't work out. Like everything that they had grown all of a sudden dies. And it's because they had a karmic lesson that had to be learned to like appreciate and love people and support people and they didn't take advantage of that. But you need to know how powerful you are as a result of that, that you can bestow that energy, that beautiful, powerful luck energy on people that you think are going to do great things with it, right? Don't waste your time on people that treat you badly. Don't waste your time on people that aren't ready to do the work. Focus on hanging out with people that are actually doing something in the world, because by being around you, you're going to make them luckier. So, you know, select people to be around that are going to do some good in the world because we need that. And that's partially another aspect of your divine purpose, right? That's why you're bestowed with this blessed energy. 
So the convention card is talking about the fact that you have the ability to get people to think outside of the box. You know, they might be thinking in a really traditional way. They're just thinking, oh, I'm just going to, you know, buy a house. I'm going to have a car. I want to get married. I'm going to have kids, you know, like, and there's nothing wrong with that life. That's beautiful. That's what I wanted for so long. Spirit had different plans for me and I am totally for it. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of people out there that Spirit has different plans for and everyone is trying to go down the same pathway and you are that catalyst for change. You're like that light bulb moment for them. They get together with you and I mean in any capacity this could be like you live next to them that you're their best friend you're their sibling you know you are their co-worker you're their lover but you help inspire them to think outside of the box to start growing beyond the boundaries that they've set up for themselves to just try something not be so conventional be experimental and you also help them to understand that by experimenting, the pain that they're experiencing, the self-limiting beliefs, the discouraged thoughts, anything that has been sort of trying and difficult for them, just the act of doing something different and stepping outside of your comfort zone can actually end that cycle and allow them to start something brand new, a more abundant opportunity that will potentially help them fall into their life purpose. Okay, so now let's find out how you're charmed in magic. Okay, you've got bamboo, core strength and diligence. I Ching, change, and lots, chance. Okay, so in terms of magic, like this is um, specifically literal magic, spiritual gifts, the, um, all of the, you know, esoteric magical aspects of life. So what this is saying to me is that you have psychic abilities, you are able to see into the future, you are an oracle. So you may have a variety of different psychic abilities that allow you to do this. I get this sense that for many of you, you're using divination techniques. Maybe you're card readers yourself. Maybe you work with runes or um, witches runes. Maybe you use an entirely different system. Maybe you use the I Ching. Maybe you use palm reading. There's a never ending list of different techniques that you may be using. For some of you, you might be getting information through your dreams. Um, you might be just getting premonitions about things. It could be literally through your dreams. It could be um, through, you know, clear cognizance and so just a direct knowing. And you are going to be able to not only use this gift to help yourself, but to also help others. So never feel fear sharing an idea with another person, especially when you feel like this is the perfect idea for another person, because the energy I get is that you, that's part of your gift. Being able to pinpoint, you know, sort of pull out of the air exactly what another person needs to do so that they can fulfill their purpose, because like I said, there is enough for everyone. Everyone here has a very special reason for being. And we never have to worry that there's a, a limited number of ideas. That goes back to, you know, capitalist brainwashing where, you know, we lose out if we don't protect and, you know, uh, you know, copyright and patent and like we have to put all of this legal protection around our ideas, but the universe is ever expanding. It's constantly pouring in new ideas and you have to like embrace that. I think in your heart of hearts, you know that that's true, but like it hasn't fully manifest into like the physical, like us literally seeing the whole world work that way. Right now we only see certain innovators take those risks and then massive, you know, abundance comes towards them. And we've been sort of like brainwashed into thinking that only select few 
can have that happen to them and everyone can have that. You know, everyone has a special role. So you have to allow yourself to sort of step out of the convention and trust what's coming forward to you and take action on the things that you know are right for you. And don't be afraid to pass on that information to other people as well, because I get this sense that the more you pass on those divine messages is what I'm being told to other people. Now, you don't necessarily have to say, well, I had a premonition and this is what you need to do. Like you mean casual conversation, just giving them general advice, but don't be afraid to say things like that because that will then reflect back on you with more magic and more opportunity that's custom designed for you, right? You will live what you project out, right? So if you're fearful and protective and you think there isn't enough, that's what you're going to experience. And it's frightening to sort of step out of that like convention and, you know, really live your truth. But you it, like you will gain so much from it. You will gain this core strength and it does require diligence. You know, you have to like actively be working towards the fulfillment of your own manifestations or the um, possible positive outcomes of your magic, right? You may actually be a practicing um, witch or magical in some regard, and it requires dedication and diligence. You may actually be a solitary witch. You may have felt called to the craft or you're feeling called to um, the spiritual side of life more and more and more, and you're feeling isolated a little bit, like you would like to you know, get the answers. But what I want you to know right now, because what's directly being told to me is that you're worried that you're doing it wrong. There is no such thing. You know, there's plenty of different traditions when it comes to spirituality or the approach to magic or even the occult. Um, but there isn't just one right way. You know, there is a way that has been traditionally used and a path that's well tread. So you can go back and you can look at those resources. But I can tell you from all of the research I've done, there I've never found one pathway that suited me 100%. I would consider myself an eclectic witch where I am pulling from lots of different teaching. I'm not limiting myself to just one particular path because I feel like there is so much grand wisdom and insight that I want to incorporate into my earthly experience. So don't think that just because you're new to this or you're interested in different things that you know you don't have any skill or that you have to do things one particular way. No, once again, that goes back to like the capitalist brainwashing. It can go back to like the the organizations that like to keep us sort of labeled and controlled because if they can like sort of categorize everyone, then they can keep a handle on everything ultimately. So then they can finally say, okay, this is the right way. That is the wrong way. We're right. You're wrong. Then they create this other scenario where there's the haves and the have nots. And then they can also put a price tag on it right? Like you have to pay me X number of dollars for this insight. And the universe is abundant. We are more than worthy of everything that the universe has to offer, everything that this earthly experience has to offer just by being alive. You are magical AF. So lean into it, right? Lean this way, lean that way. You know, bend with the times like the bamboo, you um, can also expand in different areas over time. You know, you can go down one particular path when it comes to your spiritual side. You know, try out different divination techniques because you clearly have some sort of psychic ability here. Lean into that. Then, if all of a sudden you feel like you are being pulled towards um, herbalism, go down that pathway. And if you read one book or you read half a book and you lose interest and you want to go in another direction, do that. You know, we, 
there isn't one right way. Explore it. Just enjoy the experience of learning instead the, the here and now that moment of learning versus where you're going to get because what that mindset goes back to once again capitalism that if i can get to this level then i'm going to be able to get something in return don't think about it you're getting something in return just by having the experience of exploring who you truly are and like i said you are magical af this is so exciting so i want to get you guys just some final cards and see if there's any final guidance that your guides would like you to know on your charmed life let's see you got spider spirit make your dreams real number 56 which also reduces down to the number 11 magic there's magic happening here again make your dreams real you are crafting your reality the spider is a beautiful spiritual symbol about creating your destiny like weaving the future that you want to see in the day to day like there are certain things that you will have to experience that is inevitable but ultimately there is so much that you can actually craft like the points in between those major events you get to make those decisions so you do have a high amount of free will or at least free choice i should say in terms of how things are going to develop for you and then the final message from your guides about your beautiful charmed life your beautiful charmed qualities you got oh wow okay so you've got the eight of swords the ten of swords the six of swords and the fool so this is saying that there are painful experiences that you have had in the past maybe going back to what i was talking about with the beauty painful experiences in the past maybe of how you saw yourself maybe opportunities doorways that were closed to you people that thought you were weird they didn't want to hear what you had to say that maybe they were closed-minded maybe they were like i like the idea that i'm better and they're worse or i like the idea that you know i can just make a lot of money and i don't have to worry about anyone else you know like who cares about the environment who cares about the fact that like people are going bankrupt because they get sick like we don't care about any of that i just want to get rich well those people may have caused you a lot of pain and heartache and all of that even though it might be hard to realize in the moment can actually be the groundwork the teaching right that gave you this awareness so that you could communicate about creating a better life for yourself because you have been able to see things from both sides like you haven't had this quote unquote charmed perfect life right you i get the sense that maybe it, it's been a contrast for you like there's been periods of time where, where it's been very dark or very difficult and some of you may still be hanging on to some of those self-limiting beliefs or the opinions of others or those false narratives or concepts that are perpetrated by others or projected onto us and you're being asked to release that start talking to yourself in a new way and then you're gonna have this brand new beginning the fool like you are so close some of you may have already started this but a lot of you are just so close to literally taking the first step down the pathway of your divine purpose where everything starts to change where the momentum starts to build where the beauty starts to be amplified your voice becomes more powerful opportunities luck is pouring into you and you potentially rise up in your field and you're seen as like highly successful highly abundant um just radiant is the energy i'm getting 
Oh my God, I hope that you guys enjoyed this reading. This was so amazing. I would love to know what your thoughts are about this. Um, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you're not comfortable leaving a comment, you can leave an emoji so I know that you were here and that you enjoyed the reading that will enter you into the contest. Definitely go and check out Anna Louise's website. Check out their um, amazing collection of jewelry. And uh, as I said in the intro, I have a discount code where you can get 20% off your purchase by um, inputting Odessa20 at checkout. And if any of you guys are interested in working with me, you can go to my website, odessamall.com. All of my services and booking information are available there. I do tarot card readings. I also do spiritual coaching, which is like a live tarot card session where I use tarot oracle channel, but I also give you advice. I help you to work through anything that you're currently facing, helping you to get into alignment with the next leg of your journey, the next blessing and miracle. I also do past life readings and I can do channeled messages with your spirit guides. And I also offer Reiki and I do distance Reiki so I can work with anyone no matter where you are in the world. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you all and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care. Hi, Pile number two, welcome back. So you picked the Palo Santo in the Queen Anne's Lace and you also picked this gorgeous Anna Luisa Sun Charm necklace. And before we get into the cards, I wanna mention I'm running a contest right now. You can win a free reading with me. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, comment on this reading, and then when I reach the milestone of 6,000 subscribers, I will announce the winner on my community tab. And we are so close to reaching that milestone. So I would love to get you in on the contest. Just subscribe and comment, it's that easy. So let's get into your reading. I wanna start off by looking at how you're charmed in beauty, which is what these first two cards are gonna tell me. So you received the Morgan, the goddess of death and magic, card number 38, which reduces down to the number 11. And the number 11 is a master number. It's connected back to your divine purpose. Then you have the 10 of pentacles, beautiful. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that you are a shapeshifter. The Morgan is a Welsh goddess back from Celtic mythology. And she is able to present herself in a multitude of different ways. She can show herself as a beautiful young woman and then moments later present herself as an elderly woman known as a crone. She can also transform herself into animals. She is connected to not only death and magic, but also the shadow realm. She's connected to war and trickster energy. So you are able to shapeshift. You're able to change the way people see you. So this might be a situation where you are a master of illusion. So maybe you are using makeup and you are um, really carving out your face. You are creating an illusion. You are presenting yourself in a certain way. And based on how you use the makeup, you can look different ways. This might be a situation where you even work in like film or television and possibly even prosthetics. And part of your job has to do with creating those kinds of illusions. And maybe it's not makeup. Maybe it has to do with fashion and you're able to create different illusions with clothing or maybe it's hair. I definitely get this sense that you don't always look the same to people. So maybe you like to switch things up a lot. You know, you are one of those people that's constantly changing their hair color or you grow your hair out and then you chop it all off like the next day, like the minute it reaches the length that you were hoping for, you've accomplished your goal and it's like, ah, I'm tired of this, I'm gonna chop it all off. Maybe you work in sort of a traditional workspace where you have to wear a sort of corporate attire, but when you're 
at home, with friends, with family, on the weekend, you look entirely different. You may really like a uh, witchy, gothic, or punk aesthetic. You might be very drawn to the energy of death and magic, like I said, witchy, um, possibly gothic. But this might also be a situation where you just really like whimsy, like maybe you're whimsy goth, right? Which isn't necessarily dark. It's more like a fairy tale. Maybe you're interested in upcycling and the death aspect is you taking things that, you know, have a shelf life and you transform them, right? Like you're doing things even for your home. It's not necessarily just your um, physical look, right? Like for example, this, the orchids came from my own orchid. It blossomed, I dried them out. This is a cork that I just shaved, like I sanded it down, it came from like a wine bottle. And this is just for collecting oil. It, there was two of them, like an oil and vinegar set. And I just created this little spell jar to hold my dried orchids. And, you know, I've added intention to it. Um, maybe you have an eye like that where you see something and you're like, oh, I could use that for this. Or maybe I can, you know, shift and change something I already own to make it more modern. You know, our ancestors, I mean, even recent ancestry did that. You know, like my grandmother, she would buy really quality clothing her entire generation. They went through the war, the Second World War. And, you know, Things were expensive and so they would buy quality and they knew how to sew and they would tailor their own garments. They would, you know, adjust things and they would have things for a really long period of time. They also really like curated their own personal style and I feel like you're doing that as well. Um, you might really like the, the magic and like fairy tail like maybe you're into cosplay that might also be connected back to like shape shifting you know like you know maybe you are like creating cosplay outfits for other people maybe you are a cosplayer and so obviously in your day-to-day -day regular life people would never you know see you the same way as when you are in character um, the other energy that I get is that you are very abundant and luxurious. Your beauty looks expensive. So I think that there are some of you that maybe you have lots of resources and you really buy quality. Maybe some of you are really interested in vintage, right? Like you, you recognize that things from the past, clothing, but all things, were made to a higher caliber in the past and you invest in that. Like it might be a situation where, you know, maybe you're not interested in a, a witchy aesthetic, but you have a particular vibe that you like and it's like your whole house is mid-century modern and like you go to auctions and you do the, the search to find those things to create that kind of environment. But um, and you spend the money because you've got the money and you spend the money. But for others of you, you are giving new life to something. You're giving new life to things that maybe you find like discarded, but you make it look so expensive. And I'm so thrilled to see that there's more people that are doing that. Like there is so much stuff in the world and you know, there has, I'm a maximalist. I like stuff. I have all kinds of stuff. But I have all kinds of stuff that I've rescued, <laughs> you know, like I, I don't, I like to make things. I like to shift and change and create things. And I get the sense that many of you are that way too, you know, like a lot of the aesthetics I've gotten so many compliments on, you know, my aesthetic. Well, like everything I found at like thrift stores or it was gifted to me, you know, or I just saw it in a new way. Like even like all of the things that like you know, I use as my little charms or the little props that you guys get to select from, you know, it's the dried flowers from my garden that most people would just, you know, put in the compost. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to take 
those and I'm gonna make it into a St. Bridget's cross. I just get this same sense from you, you know, but maybe it's not the same, you don't process it the same way that I do, right? You have a different aesthetic, but you see the beauty where other people might only see trash or they see ugliness. And I think that you see that in people too. I get the sense that many of you are the people that adopt, you know, the three-legged cats. You're the ones that have dogs in wheelchairs, you know, like you're the people that probably follow a lot of accounts where like people are rescuing animals. Like I just get this sense that like you are kind of like uh, the, the queen or the king of those that are discarded and forgotten, you know, like the island of misfit choice. <laughs> you're like, you're interested in that. And I absolutely love that. I am a huge fan of you. Okay, so now let's get into how you are charmed in terms of charisma. Okay, so you've got fool. Fearlessly revealing emotions, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. You've got a sense of humor. I love this. So I get this sense that you are able to talk about difficult things. You know, people might feel certain discomfort around certain topics or they might have their own fears. Um about you know their own weaknesses or their own perceived weaknesses and you're able to get them to laugh at themselves laugh at you know the situation and relax sort of change the narrative so that we can get towards something new you disarm people with your humor and I think that you're definitely willing to look at self first like if if you you can see your own weaknesses or your own hypocrisy. You know, you're not beyond seeing that, you know, you might be in the wrong or you might need to shift or change your perspective. And people find that very endearing. They, you know, like you have a lot of power. Like you definitely have this ability to be very intimidating as well with the Morgan. Like you might be so beautiful that you're really intimidating. You know, like it might be a situation where like it's not necessarily that you're going out of your way to make people a little bit afraid of you. Like you just might have been blessed to look like a model or a god and you have found that like there is a fine line between having privilege when it comes to your beauty and it being um, a limitation, right? Like there's, there is beauty privilege. There are certain things that people get when they're really, really attractive, but it can cross that line where people assume that your life is so easy because you're conventionally attractive in some way that they feel like they need to take things away from you and you might have experienced so much pain and, and disappointment and bullying is the energy I'm getting that you um learned a lot you learned a lot about like the fact that the physical beauty like doesn't really matter and it's fleeting and whether someone thinks you're beautiful or not it, it doesn't really say anything about your true character the true beauty comes from inside and it's how you feel about yourself and that makes you you know very dis um, disarming when it comes to this kind of like judgment, like you're able to laugh at yourself and not sweat the small stuff. And I think that people just find that very charming. Like you, um, I think that you're a very kind, sweet person as well. And, and maybe some people weren't expecting that. Maybe they were expecting you to be confrontational based on like your aesthetic or they just assume that because you're attractive, you're going to be really mean and, and you're not because I think that they have an entirely different idea of who, what your life experience has been. You know, like if you might have never been asked out because you're so intimidating that, you know, possible love partners never asked you out 
or yeah, like you got bullied by people. Okay, you got terminated quartz, grounding, harmony, purifying. Terminated quartz grounds and deflects negative energy while amplifying and raising our positive energy field. It combines clear quartz and black tourmaline, creating a powerful spiritual growth clean a powerful spiritual growth cleansing properties. It combines clear quartz and black tourmaline, creating a powerful spiritual growth cleansing properties. That doesn't sound right. Anyways, that's what it says. So, um, you are somebody, like I said, who've experienced hate and like, and discrimination and bullying, and you have taken that on, you've absorbed it, you've allowed it to give you wisdom, you've stayed grounded, you found harmony in your own life, you've used that negative experience to open yourself up spiritually so that you can see the truth and you're not, uh, you're liberated. And if you're not there yet, you will be there. You know, this is, this is, some aspects of this may not have been revealed to you yet, but it is your experience. It is inside you. And the further you walk down your path, especially your life purpose path, like that true destiny for you, the more this will become clear to you. You also got um, calcopyrite, perception, cleansing, self-esteem, uh, calcopyrite enhances perception and connects us to universal energy. It acts as a connector between the physical world and the worlds of the past. It removes energy blocks and deepens meditative states. Yes, I do get the sense, going back to the beauty, that there is some sort of connection that you have to the past. So maybe you study magic, maybe you study history, maybe you study just like the world and like the evolution of culture. And there's some piece of something that you've been interested in that maybe you've even been obsessive about in the past. You've gained a lot of knowledge and you now share that knowledge with others. And you have a beautiful package, however you present it, maybe it's physically you, maybe it's the way you create your content and it's beautifully styled and it's, or it's just, it doesn't necessarily have to be like beautiful and styled in like sort of that Instagram way. It's like, it's, it's perfect for your audience. They see it, they see the beauty in it, they love it. And, um, you are helping them to understand the past and maybe their own past, maybe the world's past and how that relates to now. And you have such charisma about how you present these topics. Like maybe you have a TikTok channel where you're talking about history. There's so much more of that now on TikTok, which I absolutely love. Um, but there is something about how you use your own charisma and magic to help change people's perceptions of the world and self, and you help them to sort of cleanse um, hateful ideas is what's coming forward. Anything that would lead to a sense of death, maybe for some of you, it's literally connected to the energy of death, reframing the whole idea of ending cycles and potentially even the final ending of our earthly experience when we transcend from this life into the next. In the Western world, we don't talk about death, right? It's seen as something that's ugly, sort of dirty and dark and people are, are it's even, it's fetishized but it's also repulsive and it's like the most natural thing, like birth and death are the two most natural things like it, that we go through in the human experience. That is the beginning and the end for all of us. So maybe you're helping people to, you know, talk about some of their own births and deaths and you do it in such a beautiful way. Okay, so now let's find out how you have um, luck, how you are charmed in luck. So the first card that you got is influence with Mercury, card number seven. We've got the serpent and Adam and Eve. And then love, tomato, the water symbol, uh, Libra, card number 30. 
Okay. Oh my God. So in terms of your luck energy, you are really charmed when it comes to love. I think that you have a lot of love partners that are naturally drawn to you. Like I was saying before, there is something that is very, very beautiful, sensual, attractive about you. Lots of people want to be with you. They want to date you. They want to have intimacy with you. People might fall in love with you really, really, really quickly, but I also get this sense that they might want to own you is the energy. Like there have been people that have come into your life. You've probably had a lot of karmic connections where people are drawn to your physical beauty or your power and your charisma, and they want to be on your arm. And then ultimately they are a negative influence in your life where they're causing you some discomfort or pain that's likely helped you to sort of like overcome your own past. Maybe, you know, walk through the darkness. Maybe you're a shadow worker. You might relate to that term. Um, but it looks like you are the deliverer of people's karma. Like you're sort of walking them through their own karmic lessons. So it might have been painful for you, but it was sort of like part of what you were supposed to be doing. Not only were you helping them to understand what it's like to be in a balanced relationship or what they should be aiming for in terms of being emotionally connected and grounded, like being able to express yourself, but it also seems like you're helping them to um, have deeper compassion, empathy, intuition. And I mean, it's possible that they were helping you to do that as well to a certain degree because it seems like there was an awakening for you through these love partnerships that helped you to gain knowledge, right? Because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge. So there is this partnership where you are helping people to gain knowledge and it's a very lucky experience, but I think at the same time it might have burned at the time and it's only with hindsight that you look back and you think, oh, I learned so much from that. That was such a great experience in my life because it led me down this path or it led me down that path. Now, I get the sense that a lot of the blessings that came from the sacrifice is the word that's coming forward hasn't come through to you yet. But for many of you, you might not have completed this sort of like lesson of enlightenment. You haven't fully stepped into your power as the Morgan, like connecting back to that energy yet. But this will start to balance out. It's it's your destiny. 100% your destiny. There are blessings that are owed to you. And I do think that you're going to meet the right person. You're going to be very lucky in love, but you might have to sort of finish out some karmic connections before you meet the right person. And for those of you who are interested in having a family, I definitely see that as a possibility here. It could be a physical child. It could be a um, fur baby. It could be that you're going to be like um, fostering in some capacity. But I mean, for some people, their plants are their babies, you know, like it could be in a number of different ways, but you are going to have like a solid partnership. I mean, it could also be you um, being, you know, in an unconventional relationship where there's more than, than two people. Um, but I definitely feel, however this looks for you, that you're going to be in a very, very beneficial, loving relationship in the future, and it will be your reward for everything that you've already endured and everything else you may still endure. Um, you need to like listen to your own intuition when you're making decisions about love because you have the ability to not really have to walk into these situations. You don't necessarily have to date some of these karmic people for them to learn the lesson. Turning them down could be the catalyst for them to learn whatever it is they need to learn. And you can make really wise choices about only eating from the fruit that's ripe, right? So like, wait, 
until you meet people that are worth it, right? Don't second guess your own worth or convince yourself that you can't find the right person. No, you have this inherent magic. Like you literally have a goddess of magic. If anyone's gonna be able to manifest the perfect partner for them, it's you. And it looks like you have a lot of spiritual gifts when it comes to your psychic abilities. It'll be interesting to see what these cards are, but you likely already have a sixth sense that you are being guided towards a particular person. And I'm being told right now, the right person for you is interested in the same things as you. So this will be your hobbies. Like if you are into like goth and like you know, vintage, they like that stuff too. If you're interested in cosplay, they're into cosplay. Like you don't have to sacrifice that. It's not going to be a situation where you meet someone and like you have entirely different hobbies and groups of friends. I get the sense that you're going to like fit together perfectly. And right now you should just be allowing yourself to be lucky in love and have fun. You do have siren energy. Like I said, people are going to be falling in love with you really rapidly, really easily. Don't allow them to make you feel guilty or pressured like you owe them something just because they're interested in you. You don't owe them anything, right? And you don't have to like them just because they like you, even if they are perfect on paper, right? Like you can't, force yourself to be interested in someone just because they fit a whole bunch of criteria. And I think that if you actually wrote down everything that you're truly looking for, you'd actually find out once you sat down and like sort of listed it all out that they actually don't fit what you want. You know, maybe they have like, you know, five of the primary things, but in total, they don't really have what you're looking for. And I would say just distance yourself from them because those are those serpent people where they will say what they need to say to get you to do what they want you to do. They are cunning and manipulative. So I would distance yourself. There's no point even trying to have a friendship with them because they are like deep in their shadow energy and they have to deal with some karma still. Okay, so now let's find out how you are charmed in magic. So this is literally talking about magic, spiritual gifts, the metaphysical, even the occult. So you got hydromancy, illusion. What was I saying? That's insane. With the Morgan, death and magic, you are a master of illusion. So you are able to get people to see what you want them to see. Now, this is definitely something that you have worked on in multiple past lives. I know not everyone believes in past lives, but it's one of my core beliefs. So I always speak from my own perspective, right? So you have worked on this for many lifetimes. And I'll be honest, in past lives, you were likely dark magician energy where you were using your ability to communicate, to fool people, to um, pull the strings. You were likely in a political arena at some point in the past. Maybe you were part of an organ, top tier in an organization, possibly in the church, possibly in some sort of like corporate enterprise where you were manipulating people. We have to learn the, you know, both sides. <laughs> That's why we live so many times, right? So we're looking at things from every possible perspective. So we really understand what it is to be alive. And that's what helps us build empathy. Even though when you come into this world, you don't remember some, actually lots of children do, but as you grow older, typically we lose those memories. Now, you have the ability to scry with water that will help you to come back to a place of remembering. So I would say 
Um, having ritualistic baths, like running yourself a beautiful bath, putting essential oils, definitely throw that sea salt or Epsom salt in the water, putting some beautiful flowers in, just soaking in the water and like just allowing your mind to go. Like you're just you know, meditating, basically, you don't have to focus on anything specifically, but you're just allowing your energy to flow, try and redirect away from any like fearful thoughts, like any kind of um, ruminating thoughts where you're panicking about things, and you're thinking about it over and over and over again. It's difficult. I have that happen to me, and I have to consistently redirect my thoughts. So you're trying to just be at peace and see what comes forward because you did get mercury here and mercury I have personally found comes forward through water a lot it's very easy to connect to that mercurial energy which also is positive and negative trickster 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 mercury slash Hermes is so um you are definitely going to be able to get a lot more guidance about the future or maybe even the nature of another person, possibly healing too. That's what's strongly coming forward. Now you may also want to just do some scrying, like I was mentioning a moment ago, where you're going to get a bowl of water and maybe you put some flowers and as they are floating around, they're creating different shapes or you're seeing different shadows in the water and that is getting your mind to think of different things. Some people put ink in the water and the shapes that the ink makes also gives them messages. I would say if you are witchy, I would definitely try and take a look at that. You might want to look at um, the Nordic Wolfie on Instagram. She's amazing. And she does a lot of this ink scrying that I'm talking about. So you can go and check her stuff out if you wanted to get, like, see what I'm talking about, see a demonstration of it. She has explained how to do it on her Instagram account. Okay, so you also got Rue, Regret and Repentance and Fox Club, Friend or Foe. You're able to read people's energy. And this is so wild. Like she is holding this beautiful fairy. And the Morgan is connected back to fairy energy. Morgan Le Fay is also connected. Like that mythology is connected back to the Morgan. And so you may be very connected to fairy energy. And you may even be connected to that trickster energy of fairy energy where some people that are deeply connected to the fae have a lot of things that go missing. Oh, it's so annoying. Oh my God. Like for like three hours the other day, I was looking for candle wicks. I was pouring my own candles and it was definitely like trickster energy. Anyways, that kind of stuff might happen for you where you're like, I know I put my keys right here and all of a sudden they're gone. And so <laughs> I would say lean into that more, start working with the Fae. I mean, only if this is something that you're already interested in. And if you, if that's not part of your wheelhouse, that doesn't make sense to you, you might want to just like uh, lean into the energy like the mythology of the Fae, like opening yourself up to learning about different fairy tales and mythology might really help you in terms of your own magic and understanding yourself because all of those myths and legends, there is like a core of truth to them. There is a deeper message to them. And sometimes you just need to open yourself up to that to like help everything make sense. And I think what's going to make sense for you is all of the pain and all of the things that you've already endured where like people bullied you or you had bad relationships. All of a sudden, you're not going to have the regret for the things that you did or the things that other people did. Like you'll make peace with it. You'll understand it. It will just come through to you like, you know, a direct knowing, clear cognizance. And you'll be able to make amends for that in your heart and mind. You'll just ask for forgiveness. Please help me to move past this. And if you lean into this energy, you're also going to, 
I get the sense that your energy reading is going to grow and you're going to be able to tell who's a friend and who's a foe right from the word go and you're not going to be bothering with these people any longer. Now, you may have already had this ability. You likely had this ability your entire life but maybe other people made you feel bad. Maybe they told you, mm, you're reading in, you're into this, you're judging people. And so you second guessed it and you allowed yourself to waste too much time on people that were ultimately going to hurt you. And you just need to like start leaning into that even more because I think that your natural magnetism, the siren energy that I keep talking about, it's been drawing the like the people that are still in need of deep healing. And so maybe you're even apprehensive of even being around people. Maybe you're kind of a loner, but you have the ability to draw the right people into you. And I'm getting magical intention. Definitely go and check out my little bonus reading. If you didn't hear about it in the intro, I'll mention it now. I did a little video this week talking all about how to charm a piece of jewelry to set an intention in it. So you might want to do that. I get the sense that many of you like jewelry or, you know, like there's something that you like to wear all the time and you can charm that to help you to overcome your fear of other people and draw in the right people to you. So now I wanna give you guys just some final guidance from your guides about how you're charmed. What would your guides like you to know about your charmed energy? Oh, this is so beautiful. You got honor spirit. You are never alone. Yeah, you might be a medium as well. You might feel spirit energies, your ancestors around you at all times. Card number 42, which reduces down to the number six. So that can be talking, it's talking about balance basically. And you got Libra here as well, which is talking about balance. So that can be talking about divine masculine and divine feminine, the light and the dark. It can be talking about the spiritual and the um, the physical world. There is a blending of the two. And I get the sense that you are able to see past the veil, whether you're aware of it or not. You have a sense that there are spiritual energies watching out for you. Maybe these are your own loved ones. And they truly are. They are with you at all times, guiding you forward, cheering you on is what I'm hearing. And then your final message from your spirit guides about your charmed energy. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. You are so close to things massively changing. For those of you who are still feeling a little bit stuck, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling bullied, you're in a bad relationship, or you're afraid of even going there, things are about to shift and change. And for others of you, this energy has already begun. You got the three of wands, which is talking about your ships coming in, the things that you've been trying to manifest finally coming towards you. The Ace of Cups, a brand new relationship. Could be love, could be best friend, it could be coworkers. It could be anything that's going to be emotionally fulfilling to you. It could be a brand new pet. And then the Fool, which is the first card of the Major Arcana. This is that brand new beginning for you. And of course, you've got the Ten of Pentacles. Like the Ten is always talking about the end of a cycle, and Pentacles are talking about the physical world. So, Whatever you've been struggling with, that is going to be shifting, metamorphosizing, right? You're not going to be losing things that are positive to you. You're going to be shifting away from things that don't serve you any longer and then moving towards way more abundance, way more fulfillment and a deeper understanding of self. I am so excited for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Um, definitely let me know what you thought in the comments um, that will enter you into the contest. And for those of you who don't like to leave a comment, I totally understand. You can leave me an emoji and you will still be entered into the contest. 
and definitely go and check out the Ana Luisa website because their stuff is amazing and I've got a discount code for you guys below if you enter Odessa 20 at checkout on their site you will receive 20% off and if any of you guys are interested in working with me, you can go to my website, odessamall.com. All of my services and booking information are available there. I do tarot card readings, spiritual coaching, which is an opportunity for you to meet with me on Zoom and I walk you through any problem that you're having. I help guide you through it using a combination of channeling, um, tarot, oracle, as well as my own like, lived experience. And I also do Reiki and it's distant healing so I can work with anyone no matter where you are in the world. I also channel messages from your spirit guides and I can do past life readings. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer your questions or help you find the right service. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful day or night and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care. Hi pile number three, welcome back. So you picked the purple flowers, the amethyst point, and my brand new Ana Luisa ring with the lapis lazuli stone. So before we get into the cards, I wanna mention I'm running a contest right now. You can win a free reading with me. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, comment on this reading, and then when I reach the milestone of 6,000 subscribers, I will announce the winner on my community tab. And we are so close to reaching that milestone, so definitely get in on that right now so you don't miss out. Okay, so let's get into your reading. I'm gonna be looking at what makes you charmed. I'm gonna start off by looking at how you're charmed in beauty, which is what these two cards are gonna let me know. So you received the goddess Quan Yin. She is a Chinese goddess of compassion. She's also connected to the energy of motherhood, also beauty. This is card number 27, so that reduces down to the number nine. And then you also received the twins. So this is the lover's card, beautiful. Okay, so what's coming forward is you are a very beautiful person, inside and out. I think that you are someone who has a lot of compassion, a lot of nurturing energy. I think you inspire people. I get the sense that you're a very creative person. And I think that you try and help nurture that in other people. I think that maybe you're very experimental with you the way that you physically present yourself. Maybe you like to experiment with your clothing or your hair or your makeup or your jewelry. Maybe you bring in elements from around the world. Maybe you have like cultural ties to different places in the world, whether that's from your family or whether that's based on your own lived experience and you pull that forward and you mesh that together. It might be a situation where you've traveled a lot and you bring little treasures back from all over the world. I also get this sense that you have gone through a metamorphosis in your life. I think that you might have gone through a phase where you felt like the ugly duckling, where you felt like you didn't fit any kind of beauty standard, that you weren't attractive, that you didn't have any personal style. Maybe you were really conforming. Maybe you were looking like everyone else and you felt like, well, that's just the way you know, I need to be so that I'm accepted and I'm part of the group, I'm part of the community, but it didn't feel authentic to you. Now, for some of you, it might have not been necessarily a choice. It might have been sort of forced on you. Either you didn't have the money or the resources to sort of dress the way you wanted to, or maybe you didn't have access. You might have been living in a town or a place in the world where there wasn't a lot of choice and you just sort of had to like go with what you had and I think that you weren't feeling like you were being authentic this might have been a situation where your community weren't going to accept who you truly are but you went through a metamorphosis and you have now allowed yourself to either fully embrace who you truly are or you're 
taking steps out of the shadow energy so that you can make peace with both sides of yourself. Because of course there probably is a part of you that did embrace and did uh, like the things that you were wearing, but I don't think it was totally you. And you're allowing yourself to show the true beauty of who you are, both inside and out to everyone around you. And I think that you're inspiring other people as a result of this. I get the sense for some of you, you might be artists. Like you're literally creating wearable art is the energy that I'm getting. For others of you, you're not necessarily expressing your beauty through your physical um, expression. It's through your home or it's through your job or it's through your words or it's through your relationships. Like there's so many different ways that beauty can present. This might be, you know, you being um, like loud and proud about who you love and your community and you're embracing that and you're speaking out and you are coming out as a leader, but a compassionate leader. I get the sense that you really help, like I said, nurture that beauty in others. I feel like there's an elder energy. You might be part of the LGBTQ plus community and you have had to overcome a lot of persecution and you may be experiencing sort of a resurgence in either your own life or in your community or in the world and you are stepping up you you may have already taken those steps or you're getting to a place where you're going to step forward as a leader and you're going to help the younger generations to find the strength like they're looking for a leader and, I, and maybe you know for some of you you're looking around like, okay, who, who's going to lead, you know, who's going to, to walk the beauty path, like with, with me, who's going to guide me forward. And you're realizing you're the elder and it doesn't necessarily mean that you are older, you know, being the elder, being the leader doesn't have anything to do with chronological age. It has to do with your soul's history. It has to do with what's in your heart and what's in your heart is this true, beautiful, compassionate, creative expression of beauty in all forms, physical, emotional, spiritual, and an embrace of the duality of who we are. And you are helping other people to get comfortable with that. And maybe you haven't fully stepped into that role yet. But I think that that is going to be part of your future. This is really, really powerful energy. I absolutely love Kuan Yin. If you're not familiar with this goddess, I highly recommend that you um, look into the mythology surrounding her. She's kind of equivalent to Mother Mary, very similar. Um, but... I think that this might be an energy that gives you a lot of solace and a lot of support, especially if you're open to um, working with goddesses, you're open to um, goddess work. Okay, so I also get this sense that for some of you in terms of beauty, you do physically express yourself. Maybe you have a lot of tattoos. You might be wearing traditional facial markings, like maybe you're part of the indigenous community and part of your um, heritage is facial markings and you have gone through a traditional process of of um, having yourself adorned because it is like they have significance. It can mean that you're a woman. It can mean that you have a child. There's all kinds of different meanings and maybe you have started to embrace that aspect of yourself and specifically being a woman is coming forward over and over and over again. And I really feel like I'm gonna start crying. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that. Like, like I don't know exactly why. This feels like it's a very important transition that's happened for you. It's possible that some of you are part of the trans community and that is part of this journey. Like embracing your own beauty and, and embracing who you truly are. 
there's lots of different people that are, are going to watch this and choose pile number three, but you are on the right path. But I get this sense that for all of you, I just keep hearing warrior, warrior, warrior. I feel like, you, like I said, you're meant to be the leaders. You're meant to be the elders. You're going to be leading with compassion, but it might be a little bit frightening, but you are being guided by your ancestors. You're being guided by spirit. So let's get the next series of cards. These are going to tell me about how you are charmed in terms of your charisma. So you got the wounded child that says awakens compassion and desire to serve others. Wounded it to serve other wounded children. Opens the learning path for forgiveness. This is wild. I definitely am feeling like the majority of you are part of a community that's been persecuted in some way. And that could mean that historically, culturally, you have been persecuted and you've lost your heritage. You've lost your culture in many different ways. This might be on a personal level, individually, that you had um, painful experiences growing up in your own childhood. Um, the loss of family members, possibly illness, um, abuse may have been happening within your home life. Um, there might have been you being separated from your family members or your heritage. Like there, you've definitely gone through a lot when you were a child. And I think that if you are haven't already done this, you're going to be reflecting on this experience from a spiritual perspective. It looks like you're going to reflect on it. You're going to have awakened compassion. Like it's literally says awakens compassion and then Kuan Yin, the compassion card. You're going to have compassion for not only yourself, but also the perspective of all of the other people and and this is often a spiritual concept that people really struggle with. And I definitely understand why. So we are all connected. We are all one. And we are the universe experiencing itself. So I'm the universe or God source. You're the universe, God source. Everything is the universe, God source, right? So we are all experiencing different aspects of reality. So that the universe, God, can understand what it is to be alive from absolutely every single vantage point. That means that some of us have to be villains and some of us have to be victims. And it sucks. That's where reincarnation comes into play. Where we actually have played every single role. And when you look at it from that perspective, it helps you to heal the wound. Now, the evil that was done to you was unjust. There is no um, denying that. A hundred percent. But at some point, you may be able to get to a place where you start to see the benefit for your own awareness of self and your culture and your own empowerment and your experience and where that could be an actual catalyst for you to rise up like the phoenix, right? Like the forest fire that destroys everything, but in its wake, it's destroying disease. It's opening up seed pods so new plants can germinate. You know, there is so much destruction and loss, but then there is so much life that can come from that. And it that is like a high level spiritual concept. And to accept that there might have been some benefit to the awful things that we all endure doesn't mean that we condone the evil. If anything, we're acutely aware of where there are um, troubling points so that we can know when we need to stand up and say no more at pivotal points in history. And it looks like you are going to be called forward to use your charisma because I definitely feel like to be a leader, 
from a place of compassion, you have to be able to articulate things so that people feel like they are able to open themselves up. And what just came forward is you are going to help them to understand that they are deserving of healing. And that is a radical concept. I think a lot of people sort of continue through life with a lot of suffering. And I think that partially the inability to move forward and heal is partially in some cases tied back to a feeling of unworthiness, a feeling like we are lesser than or a feeling like we are betraying our roots, our experience, our community, our culture by healing, you know, because it means that there are those that will think that we're denying what happened is, was unjust. And, and it, it both, both things can exist simultaneously. It can be unjust and you can accept that there was a positive, it, like it could be a positive catalyst for something. And it, it is so, so, so troubling. But, um, an example I can give is the, you know, changes that we can have in terms of uh, looking at crime. When certain really awful criminal cases took place, specifically like Ted Bundy and the murders that took place with him in the United States in the 1970s, all of that, you know, just like senseless destruction of life is absolutely um, disgusting and never should have happened. But what did come out of that, that was actually a benefit, the only benefit from that experience is that the law enforcement teams that had been working independently, that hadn't been sharing information at all, realized, oh my God, this guy can cross um, borders and we need to start communicating. So that was something that was positive. It doesn't make up for what happened. It doesn't justify all of that senseless loss of life. These beautiful women that were in the prime of their lives or had barely had their lives even start. Some of them were so young. But that's just one example of the universe spirit working in mysterious ways. And maybe there is something that you are going to have that sort of like epiphany moment in your own life where you realize, oh my God, this pain is actually going to help me to articulate my message in a more um, loving, compassionate way so that I can use my own natural skill of charisma to help heal people. You, oh my God, you got the lapis Lazuli card that just blows my mind because that was this that's the stone that's in this ring I don't look at these cards this is absolutely mind-blowing okay so it says intuition purification inner power lapis lazuli amplifies the power of the spoken word it aids in clear communication and speaking in large groups it connects the physical and spiritual realms providing a peaceful and clear awareness which is exactly what i was talking about you should really work on opening up your third eye and trying to communicate with your ancestors specifically but your spirit guides um the collective unconscious the akashic records whoever God, angels, however you choose to um, define the energy that is benevolent and around you, I would try and connect with that because it looks like there is some sort of peaceful, clear awareness that you're going to be able to get specifically if you connect with that spiritual energy and maybe you want to work with um lapis like I this is my lapis bracelet. I, I got this from Etsy. It was not expensive at all. Like you could get a piece of lapis for, you know, a small amount of money. And I think that it would really, really help you. And I think that it could also help to purify, possibly take away some of this sting and the pain because your pain is real, right? Like, but it looks to me like you have been going through a lot of pain and hardship to bring you to a place of deep compassion. 
Tiger's Eye, protection, creativity, branding. Um, Tiger's Eye is a protective stone and brings good luck to the wearer. It has the power to clear our emotions, focus the mind, and bring in mental clarity. It balances yin-yang energies within us and the world around us. Yes, and the twins is connected back to that yin-yang energy. The divine masculine, the divine feminine, which we all have within us, and the way that they blend and move together. They are never truly separated. Everything is blended together. Everything is entangled, if you will. So it looks to me like you're going to be able to hold space for all of that, all aspects of yourself too, because there might have been aspects of yourself connected back to this wounding where you have been the guilty party, right? Like we all have that. There's plenty of moments that I can think back of in my own life where I was like, I was the villain. I was definitely the villain. I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. Like, uh, and I learned from that and I make, um, like I ask for forgiveness, you know, I ask for forgiveness from the higher self of the people that were involved, or I ask forgiveness from my ancestors, from spirit. I ask for forgiveness from my higher self. I ask myself to forgive myself for those things because I learned something from it and I try and not hold on to that. And, and that helps me to hold more compassion too for the mistakes that other people make when they hurt me, right? Because I know I'm not perfect. And I've brought this up before and I want you to know that, um, like I am inclusive of all faiths and I consider my, my beliefs to be more pagan than anything else. But I feel like this, Get is an example that really illustrates this beautifully. But uh, Jesus in the Bible was not perfect. There are so many examples of him making the wrong choices, getting mad at people, screaming at the disciples, flipping tables over in the temple. Sure, he was upset. But there is a need for a wise mind. Flipping tables over and getting the attention of the authorities is probably not going to work out in your favor. And there were also passages in the Bible where he turned people away and refused to help them because they didn't have come from the same background or they didn't have the same faith. And he lamented that and made amends, changed his opinion. So, like... You have, you have to show yourself that same grace and it will also then transcend into how you show other people that same grace. But you have this magical skill to be able to do that, right? You have, you're charmed in this way. You have this ability to, once you click that on in your own mind, you will be able to light other people's candles, if you will. The light in you will light others. So... This is a powerful pile. My pile number three is always blow my mind. You guys are going to change the world and I am so living for it. Okay, so now let's talk about how um, you are a lucky charm, how you're charmed in luck. So the first card that you got is Refinement Dahlia. This has Scorpio, the number 42, which reduces down to the number six, which is also talking about the yin-yang energy, the lovers, which is also card number six in the major arcana, and the air symbol. I don't know if I said that already. So logic, communication coming forward here, and, and there's a mortar and pestle on this card. And of course, Scorpio is connected back to illusion and also the spiritual esoteric, the occult. You are going to be taking things that are kept in the shadows, the things that are secret, and you are going to be bringing that into the light, and then you are blending them with things that are physical, of the physical world. So maybe this is, you know, um, philosophies or beliefs about self or others that people don't talk about out in the open. You're bringing that to the light, and then you're, you're, creating a, a dialogue. You're opening things up. So we are going to talk about this. We're not going to jump on people and, and demonize them. We want to have an open, inclusive conversation, not because they're right, but because if someone feels threatened, 
the, the conflict just continues and continues and continues. And we're going to recognize that we are, we play both sides of the argument as well. Maybe not with this issue, but with something else, right? So it looks like you're going to be able to help refine the discussion or refine what is being created or crafted. And that's adding a lot of lucky energy. Like you're going to be able, because of the way you're articulating things, the way you're thinking about things, the way you're expressing your emotions or you're explaining concepts to others that are in the shadows. Maybe it's spiritual, maybe it's lifestyle, maybe it's something else. But because you're going to be doing it in a very particular refined way, you're adding a lot of magic and luck, which is bringing in more balance. You also got protection with the earth energy, the onion, Aries, the number nine. And this was also card number nine. So you have six, six, nine, nine. And oh my God. And then 69. So that is also the Pisces symbol, which is talking about illusion as well in this spiritual. But then it's also um, to, like that yin yang. That is wild. I am floored right now. Okay, so Aries, taking charge, moving forward, being a leader, not being afraid to take a risk and ground something into the earthly realm, peeling back the layers. You're creating your own luck by being fearless. And like I said, you're meant to be this leader. I think that you're probably afraid to do this. I totally understand why we're all kind of nervous. All the people that are playing this kind of role that are being asked to be a leader and talk about things that people don't want to talk about and blend different points of view and and protect ourselves from lower vibrational energy or thoughts. Being able to talk about something and it not influence us and bring about lower level manifestations. Like you have this ability to like charm your life, to be able to bring in more um, growth, to blossom ideas that bring beauty versus add like the versus stinging our eyes and bringing in something sour. You've got seduction. We've got. Um, the Jupiter on this card and it's number 12. So that reduces down to the number three. And this is Eve with the apple. And then you've got endurance with Scorpio on this card, number eight and this sun. So this is, and with the lion here as well. Um, so the lion is a symbol of leadership and power. And, you know, Eve taking a bite from the tree of knowledge, being able to understand all things, including the evils of the world, understanding her own nakedness and shame and all of the pains. That's what, you know, you've been enduring. You've been going, you've literally been enduring a lot. And possibly you've been seduced into different things that you may have found pleasure in, um, but they may have been short lived and all of this sort of negative experience that you've had, this seductions of life, maybe indulging in the ego and being able to see into the shadows is actually going to be the thing that helps you to refine your focus and bring about the good luck. I think to a certain degree, you're going to let go of the ego, like whatever this seduction is, like the desire to fit in or to be a certain way or to have a certain partner or be beautiful in a conventional way. All of the things like the, you know, having a, a you know, really fancy car, being an alpha, having a Bugatti or any of that kind of stuff, like all of that, you don't care about that. And you're going to let that go. It dissolves. It has no more power over you. And that's when your true magic and luck comes in. So it looks to me like it has a lot to do with your luck comes from you peeling away the layers of illusion, pulling away the layers of um, self doubt or self-hatred, enduring being brave, 
making magic with what you have around you and not being crippled by the fact that maybe you've made mistakes in the past and others as well. Okay, so now we're going to look at your true magic. So this is connected back to um, magic, the spiritual, spiritual gifts. It can be connected back to the occult. So you got Dowsing Rods Seeker. Okay, so you are... To be perfectly honest, I mean, there's a lot of energy. I always get occult energy from Scorpio. Um, and you've got the lapis coming forward. But with Kuan Yin and now this Seeker card, I get mystic energy. And those are two different pathways. So the mystic path is more about direct union with spirit. So going into meditation, connecting with spirit through nature, whereas the occult path is more the magic path where you're using divination and you are, you know, potentially um, looking at the mystery schools, alchemy, all of that kind of stuff. So you have this balance of both because we've got the occult, and we've also got now the seeker and Kuan Yin, that's the mystic path. So maybe you're going to be looking at both sides of spiritual development. And uh, the Kabbalah talks about this, that there is like uh, multiple ways to reach spirit. The mystical path through the, the center pillar or the occult path where you are kind of um, moving with the snake. And so... Maybe you've done this multiple times with this eight, like in past lives, and now you are bringing in the knowledge from both sides and helping to blend those and use both of them to your advantage to be this leader and share this message about beauty, compassion, connection, and luck and manifestation. Like you are a master manifester and you're definitely able to find things, find things that people need. And dowsing rods are used as divination, but they're traditionally used to find wells, to find water. And so water is a symbol of the divine feminine and compassion and empathy. So you're going to be able to help people possibly find the compassion and empathy that's buried inside them that they have been denying themselves. And if we deny it to self, we deny it to others. And you're going to help them find that. And it might be through multiple means. Um, like you might end up, you might already be in a spiritual line of work or you're a teacher or you're a coach or you're doing something where you're literally helping people. So you also got water lily, finding balance enlightenment. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's insane. Insane. Okay, so the water lily is talking about shadow work. Yeah, you are helping people to find that balance, yin yang, the number six, to get to a place of enlightenment. And everyone goes about getting to a place of enlightenment in a different way. For myself, I'm constantly going back and forth between the two pathways. I'm interested in occult. You know, that word is so, I, I hope I'm not triggering anyone by using that. It's been so demonized by Christianity, to be perfectly honest, over history, that it's lost all sense of true meaning, where it's all about the things that are unknown and the mysteries of life. Um, and it's been associated with lower vibrational, um, benevolent, evil energies. And that is not what it means. Um, it is, like I said, it's talking about, you know, secrets that can be passed down through tradition and ritual. And more people are like, okay with mystical, that word. But mystical definitely means something different. And maybe you want to move between both sides. And I do that. Like I meditate and I commune with spirit through nature. But I also use tarot, which is a divination technique, which would then fall under the occult teachings, right? So maybe you're doing something like that as well. But you have this real natural aptitude for this. So you, whatever you're being
and guided towards experiment. Try it all. See where it guides you. See what comes because there might be a doorway that's waiting to open up to you that is going to bring in a lot of blessings. You know, it's going to charm you. Okay, so let's get some final cards. This is just final insight from your guides about your charmed life. What would they like you to know about your uh, charmed energy? Buffalo spirit, the abundant universe will provide card number 10. So you're close to the end of a cycle, the beginning of a new cycle. You may not be utilizing all of the abilities that you have at your disposal to actually manifest what you want. You might want to look at the little video that I released as an extra bonus for you guys this week where I explain exactly how to charm a piece of jewelry. Um, I used the beautiful jewelry that I got from Anna Luisa and I walk you through step by step how you can charm a piece of jewelry so it helps you to stay on track with your manifestations and it amplifies that energy because you naturally have this abundant energy and this ability to bring in anything into your life, but it is directly tied to healing. And I know that that's not fun. I had to do this too. I'm still struggling with it. I mean, to a certain degree, moving past some of like the deepest pain so that the biggest manifestations can come in. So, you know, I sympathize with you, but everything is working out in your favor and everything that you need definitely will, definitely will be brought to you at exactly the time that you need it. Okay, so final, final cards. Is there any final message that you would like file number three to know about their charmed energy? Okay, so yes, you are having some trouble moving forward at this particular point in time. You are actually in the midst of the chariot energy. That is all around you, but your own thoughts are thinking very pessimistically about what's going on. Now, it's really hard you know, to like move away from this energy. One, if you've been triggered a lot and a lot of your own pain is coming forward, but also look at the state of the world. Things are insane right now. So if you are in a place right now where there is a lot of negative energy and a lot of negative development taking place, then you could easily end up sort of like focusing on that and I myself like it I'm constantly trying to perfect the art of detachment where I'm able to see what's going on in the world without being so emotionally triggered by it because it is hard for me to see what's I'm in Canada but it is very hard for me to see what's going on in the states right now what is going on in the Ukraine? What is going on in Iran? What is going on in my own country where my own government is trying to destroy our healthcare system? And that can be very triggering for me because I want beautiful abundance for all of you. I see the light in all of you. I know that you are all part of Source God. You are worthy. You deserve to be rewarded and fulfilled and have luxury and abundance and opportunity and leisure. You deserve all of that just because you were born. And there's leaders that don't get that. So I understand why you would feel pessimistic about what's going on in your life on a global scale. But obviously, there's impacts that we each have in our immediate life based on what's going on. And you're being asked to try and take on what I was just telling you about looking at things from another perspective so that you can put down the wands. You've got the 10 of wands here. 
So you're being asked to understand that the journey isn't for nothing. It's all happening for a reason. And if you look at it from that higher perspective with judgment, even if it's tricky, even if it takes some time, there were so many times when I was learning these lessons. I was getting guidance through my studies, but also direct channeled from my guides. And I was like, how can this be happening? This is unjust. Even though I know this lesson, I still, I consistently get readings where my guides are reminding me, you know that all of this happens for a reason. And I know that it all happens for a reason, but to, it's one thing to know it all happens for a reason. And it's another thing to witness all of you suffering out there. And it breaks my heart, but we have to do it. We have to be able to rise above it, not be detached from it. We have to care but we can't let it overwhelm us because we have to be ready to be able to take action when necessary. And if we are feeling negative, we're adding to this lower vibrational thought form, this negative manifestation, the benevolence of the world. And we need to start looking at what we can do, the opportunities that are around us. That's when the chariot moves forward, which is all about balanced energy. And you're gonna start to see the magic unfold all around you. Oh my God, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Um, let me know in the comments. It also adds you to the contest so you can be entered into winning the free reading. And definitely go and check out the Ana Luisa website that is below and check out their pieces. I am such a huge fan. I have three pieces now and I am definitely gonna be adding to my collection. And there is a discount code you can enter Odessa20 at checkout and you'll get 20% off of your purchase with them. And if any of you guys are interested in working with me, you can go to my website, odessamall.com. All of my services and booking information are available there. I do tarot card readings, spiritual coaching, which is a live session over Zoom where I use channeling um, tarot cards, oracle cards, as well as my own lived experience and my own um, studies and knowledge to help you walk through anything that you are facing at this particular point in time. I help guide you. And I also do Reiki, it's distance Reiki, so I can work with anyone regardless of location. I do past life readings and I do channel messages with your spirit guides. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me and I would be happy to help you um, figure out what service is the right one for you. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful day or night and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care.